Nikki mentioned earlier that we are starting a new series tonight uh, based on the book by Nikki Gamble. Um, it's you know it's a it's um, a follow up to Alpha and um, what Nikki Gamble has been doing called the Jesus Lifestyle. Difficult topics uh, that he he begins to address in the book that not not difficult for us but but questions about things that we face in our lives, um, things that we, we deal with every day of our, of our lives, things like anger, like relationships, like sex, like um, challenges that we have at, um, in, in our homes. And he begins to, to unpack those. But you know, as he unpacks, he want to understand that what God is saying about this. That as, as God works in my life and your life, he is in fact um, building in us people who live their lives in accordance with, with his blueprint for this life. I um, met a young guy very recently I had the time with him and um, the, their family um, hosted me when I started ministry and we were, we were talking and he was sharing with me um, the challenges that he has faced in his life and that at some point we one thing that you understand and you grasp uh, things about life and he said, I, I have been listening to people, to sermons, to people talking and have been reading the Bible. And, and I'm amazed that all things that have been giving trouble in my life, I have been scratching my head trying to answer these questions about life, about myself, about the future, about the world. The answers are in the Bible. And I think this is, this is what we, we, we will be doing in the next few weeks, um, is to say whatever challenges uh, that we face in this life, God has already given us answers in the Bible. And um, so we will be talking about this and, and they're really engaging you. It will not be... Uh, maybe me or any person who talks, who come and open it up for you, who uh, we will we will talk, we will engage you, so that you you share your story, uh, you share your experiences. Uh, you know the proverbs. In proverbs, they say, "Iron sharpens another iron," and 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 we hope that that will be our experience as we as we grow together, as we journey. Together. So tonight we talk about happiness. Um, what is happiness? Um, what is what is happiness? Is it well trying to just to do a research around the subject? It's, it says that people believe that happiness is it's when you have money when you have all the resources that you need to make this life easier, that you will be able to, to live and to survive, to provide for yourselves and then for those who depend on you. Um, or happiness is when you have a house, uh, when you have a car. We had the introductory dinner of Alpha on Wednesday, and Nikki Gamble was talking about this, that um, it was whether it was getting a girlfriend and um, he got a girlfriend and she was looking for some... Well, I, I, even it starts earlier than that. It starts with uh, school, uh, being a prefect, that... You know, when you look at life, you believe that if I can get this thing, then I will be happy my life 
will be covered. I will be secure. And by the mercy and the grace of God, you get all those things. You get a job, you, you, get, you are able to survive on, on, on the salary that you get. But then you realize that you, are, you, you have all these things, but you are still not happy. I wonder what for you in your life, what, what do you think is happiness? What? What are the things? How? What are the things that make us happy? How? Yes. At what point will our lives be fulfilled that we, we feel that we, we have everything that we need? That there is a, a, a level of contentment that we have in our lives. There, there is nothing that we lack. Um, uh, that every time where we go, we smile because life is good and it's treating us well. Uh, hmm? Yes. Yes, yeah, Paul in Philippians, uh, talking about the state of. Okay. <laughs> that yes, you you stay happy, no matter whatever things come into your life or issues that you face. What? Yes. You have it for a little while, then you look for something else. Mm. Yes? Yeah? Mm. And, <laughs> and it lasts forever. <laughs> You are bringing me to the point that the sermon, I will, the sermon will come to an end very soon, because I will have nothing to say. <laughs> wow, like that. Yes. Yes. And I think, well, it, uh, 
Alice. Yes. When you appreciate your blessings. Yeah. Mm. Learn to give thanks for what you have. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Let, let me just. Um, well, I just, want to, I just want to read the passage and then I think the sermon will be finished. <laughs> um, because Nikki Gamble, I uh, just want to. For us, I want, um, if we look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, we read verse 3 to 6. the beatitude uh, well if we if I start from this one it says now when he saw the crowds he went up on a mountainside and sat down his disciples came to him and he began to teach them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they, they will be filled. Um, the word that Matthew uses is the Greek has a word called makarios and uh, makarios is, is helping us or that word help us to understand that uh, the blessings the, the blessedness that, that, that Matthew is talking about um, comes from God. It is God who gives it. And at the heart of, of that word, the blessed, is, is that God is the one who blesses. So, um, he, Matthew here says that Jesus as he starts to, to teach, he opened a subject of happiness and of blessedness in a way that people who came to listen did not expect that it will come. And let me just share with you a few things that Nicky Gamble share because he, he deals with, with this area of Matthew 5, 3 to 6 in in a slightly different way because he said point number one that he picks up he says that true happiness comes from being depressed and I well some of these topics that he, he has listed I was trying to read them and there was something in me 
that wanted to rebel against the things that he was saying. Because well, I, I, we will have a different understanding that, that true happiness and our connectedness to Jesus Christ will, will not put us in a place where we are depressed. Jesus said, the blessed are the poor in spirit in verse 3. But what, what did he mean when, when uh, he says that the true happiness comes from de being depressed? Um, he, Nicky Gamble says that as he pick and understand what Christ is saying, he, he does not talk about the clinical depression. Um, so well, at least I, I was quite happy to hear that. <laughs> but but he he says that it is come from a place of of being low a place of sensing that you are being weakened a place where you you have nothing on your own because one of the things that that we 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 need to face is that when we when we believe that we have everything that we need when we come to a place where we believe that we have a control over our lives that we can we can do things the way we want to do them god does not feature the way he wants to be featuring in our lives. Um, it's, it's in a way saying that you need to come to a place of total brokenness in your life where you, you come face to face with your own thirst, the deep longings of your heart, and the reality that you need God in your life. Because when when you come to a place where you realize that your deep need in life is to have God, is to have the relationship. You need this relationship to sustain your life. It is when you have come face to face with your own poverty and, and that above everything else we stand before God as people who are helpless, who don't have any, anything on our own that we, we can do to lift ourselves up. That we, we, we will only be able to be lifted up through God helping to pick us up. And when we rely totally on his power to hold us and to work through us. So he says that one of one of the dangers in our lives is when we when we think that our lives are covered and we we are able to do things the way we we want to do them. And the second thing that, that he picks up is that happiness comes from grieving. Quite another difficult one. When you, when you come to understand that in a time of grief, you no longer have anything in yourself to pick yourself up. Whatever you, the cause of grief might be in our lives. Because in life we go through period of grieving. We grieve in different ways for, for different things in our lives. Um, when, you, when you move out of the stage of being a young person, you grieve about your usefulness 
that is beginning to fade from your sight. When, when you grow and you hit the mid, midlife crisis, you're still coming there. <laughs> Those are the periods that we, we mourn and we pay. When we lose things that mean so much to us, the possessions and things that we have held very dear in our lives because they, they have come to define who we are, we grieve. You get involved in an accident, they hit your car and you come out, you talk the first thing that you, as you look at your car it's, it's just a sense of grief in your life because it is not like it has been and so is that when we grieve we need to be comforted you see when we we can grieve about a marriage, we can grieve about a job, about our loved ones who have died. Anything, the relationship that is, that is becoming to, to turn sour or things that, that, that as we look at life, we, we realize that we are losing them. We need to be comforted. We need people who will stand alongside us and begin to comfort us. Job, um, you remember the story of Job. He had lost everything that he had. And the wife had said to him, Job, you have lost everything that you have. Just stand, curse God and die because there is nothing in you that, that is no longer available for this life. Um, and the friends who came to him said to Job that there is something that, that you have done. They did not come to comfort but, but to, to continue to accuse him. We know when we, when we mourn, when we grieve, we need. And there is only one person who can comfort us and heal our wounds. Um, I have, in the course of the ministry, have engaged so many people who through difficult times and have, have been engaging in different things to find peace within themselves and and I know even in our own lives when, when the challenge is that it is, it is more that God will, will meet us at the point of need of our pain and our sadness in life comforting us in a way that we will never understand. I, very early in, 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 in the ministry, um, I, I had a situation where a, a, a family that we know, a son committed suicide and um, was called to, to the house very early in the morning and uh, mother came back home and and found that the son has committed suicide. And as I sat and spoke with them, I was I was hardly a year in the ministry. It was it was something that was beyond my understanding of how do I walk alongside and comfort. And 
it was early in the week funeral was later that week and I said God I, I don't know how these people are going to survive I don't think that they will reach even Wednesday they will be wrecks but you know it was as if God says you don't understand that healing and power comes from me I will show you how I handle people even in their brokenness. But as they move every day, every minute of, our life, of their lives, I will release the necessary strength that they need to survive at a particular time. And I saw God just releasing strength first day giving them power second day third day fourth day the day of the funeral they were still there they were mourning they were crying God gave him power we went to the graves buried came back God one month two months Three months, strength. A year, two years, they were jumping, they were laughing. Today I can sit with them and say, hey, those were the difficult times. And God was faithful. And they will say yes. working through his people. But yes, that that God works through through us. But for me the comforting thing is that whatever situation God is already engaged in that situation. Already working in that situation. And when he brings us into situations, he, he brings us into situations where he is already at work and, and beginning to craft what he wants, that situation, the outcome into that situation. Well, I'm... Maybe while well, I have to end the sermon here, I was hoping that I could go. There are still a number of points that, that, uh, that we have. But, but I think I ha um, just love this. I, I will be here with you the next few, few weeks when I come back and continue to share this topic. <laughs> um, at the heart of happiness and blessedness, it is that our relationship with God is the key to happiness. When we, when we understand who we are before the throne of God, when we understand that we, we are loved, we are cared for, that God will, will never ever desert us. And that whatever thing that happened to us in this life does not mean that God does not love us at all. No matter how difficult, how painful, how challenging things that we face, it's when we understand and uh, like Paul, we become content in every situation. And I just want to end with um, Romans chapter 8, um, with the things that he, he mentioned uh, in Romans chapter 8. You, know, you remember that beautiful chapter.
verse 31, from verse 31, he said, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Graciously give us all things. How will he not make us people who are content and happy in this life? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns Jesus Christ to die? More than that, who was raised to life? Is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us, praying for us before the Father. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are not only conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Through him, we conquer because it is not in our own strength. It is in the strength of the one who has called us. The strength of Jesus Christ. It is, you see the relationship. This relationship is quite crucial for us to understand. Because when we are closed with the righteousness of Christ, God does not see me, does not see you. He sees the one who we have the relationship with. Jesus. And so it is through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. You see, when we, when we come to this place in, in our lives where anything can happen to us, and we remain deeply rooted in God who loves us. Happiness. Happiness is there. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. I'll, I'm sure you will, you will enjoy um, the series. Um, and we'll ask that Lisa, we have those books, do we, or the life groups, that I don't think on a particular night uh, we will be able to exhaust the, the, the areas that Nikki Gamble covers, and it will be good uh, maybe to read so that we we, we spend time in the presence of God even before we come here so that we can collectively share what God has been saying to us. And we will be building each other to face these difficult, difficult times in this life. We, we have just been hearing the news of um, the mall in Kenya. Um, devastating news of what um, you, um, you know the sh Shababa that they suspect is, is linked to the Al-Qaeda um, yesterday got into the mall and um, start shooting um, over 39 people were killed 300 injured there are still a lot of them trapped in the mall So you look at the world, you, you see this, the 
deep level of unhappiness and, and the torment that people are going through in this world. And we need to be hearing this message so that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. The world is thirsty. It needs to hear. Thank you very much. Um,